What's going on guys? Once again, I'm Nev from Nev's Tech, but today we're checking out this TP-Link AX3000 Wi-Fi 6 Bluetooth 5.0 PCIe Adapter Archer TX3000E. Now this guy looks uh, kind of familiar. It looks a lot like the last Wi-Fi 6 card that I got. Wi-Fi 6, of course, is uh, in its infancy as far as the consumer electronic uh, area is considered and this is probably the cheapest name brand that you can get so TP-Link is often known for being uh, budget budget uh, style let's say and it's easy, they're easy to get a hold of they probably work about as good as D-Link but man first off, let's look at that box nice nice so the uh, the cheaper unit that I got which is basically a white label version of the same thing. Looks a lot like this. I am going to have to pull it out and see exactly how much they compare to each other. So I've got the NS shock bag. Very nice. Very nice. That feels like very light aluminum, that's for sure. Anyways, yep, so this is definitely worth a little bit of extra money. With this, you can put things up and aside a little bit. What? This one didn't come with the USB with drivers? Last one did. That was so cool, my guys. And at least it came with the CD, I guess. Can't complain too much. I bet Windows is going to pick the driver up instantly anyways. Okay, so it definitely looks like I was mistaken. So here's Wise Tiger. This is the most popular white label brand right now. And here we got the TP-Link. If you look at uh, the PCB, you can tell pretty quickly. It definitely is different, but it looks uh, from a distance. It definitely looks about the same way. The, the um, Bluetooth on the back. Looks like we got a bigger chip in this one, possibly. Just got a heat shield in that. Anyways, let's get this thing hooked up. So as you can see here, the heat shield does not take up as much space as the Wise Tiger white label brand did. Now I have this thing wired up. I have the antenna right here. And I'm not getting full bars. I'm only getting 907 megabits per second. Now the internet speed of course is pretty much topping out because the internet speed is not as powerful as the AX Spectrum. But the thing that gets me, okay, it's going up a little bit. I got that last bar. I got the last bar, but lower megabytes, megabits a second. The thing is, my router is right here. I should be getting full bars from there, I think. Okay, so please excuse the mess. But that is where my server is, and that is where my PC is. These both have Wi-Fi 6 cards within them. And my router is right over here. So I should be able to reasonably get top speeds, I would imagine. Let's test that out. Okay, so over on the left-hand side, we have the server. On the right-hand side, we have uh, my power PC. And I want to show you something interesting about the drivers for these cards. They're both the same, Intel Wi-Fi 6, 160 megahertz. So in these situations, it's kind of like video card manufacturers. You can get like a, a, a 1050 from gigabit network and you get a 1050 from, um, I don't know, po Pony, PNY. And it's just basically another group taking a chip and swapping it or just smashing it on a board. So in this case, TP-Link smashed the Intel chip on a board. And in this case, uh, some white label name smashed their name onto the board. Okay, quick speed test on the server. This is what I'm getting for internet. Downloaded at 121 megabits per second. And the Wi-Fi station says we're getting two or 613 megabits per second. And in my uh, in this new system, uh, this is the TP-Link system. I am getting slightly better speeds. Oh no, it's about the same now. Man, what's going on here? I definitely expected uh, slightly better speeds than this. I'm wondering if the issue is the location of the router. So what I'm going to do is change the location of a router. And just like that, I bring the unit just a little bit closer. And blam, the speeds jump right back up. So now I'm going to try to transfer something from the server to my power system and see how fast it will travel. 
Okay, here's the test. The moment of truth. I am transferring a 1.5 megabyte uh, or gigabyte file. And the most that I can get is 20 megabytes a second. Which sucks. I mean, I can get out and run faster than this. I mean, it could be a lot worse, but it could be a lot better. For all this money that I threw down for an AX system, I was expecting a lot more speed than that. I mean, what's going on here? I guess I gotta mess around with my uh, settings and whatnot. But I would have expected to be faster than that with the AX, right? So what's going on here? Is it the router? Is it the old card? Is it the new card? Everything agrees that it's supposed to be going at the same speed. Maybe it's my old computer. There's got to be a bottleneck here, but I'm not seeing where and I'm not seeing why. So I downloaded this network tester and the best score that I could get was a 52 megabits per second reading. But let's say we go after that number that I had earlier. 19 megabytes a second. No, 20 megabytes a second. That's almost 190 megabits a second. And that's still well under the amount promised on the box you lied to me box all right i want to try just one more test now with these tp link units you get a usb hookup in the back this unit runs off usb 2.0 which is still relatively high i'm pretty sure that it's almost 500 megabits per second so i should be able to get a great connection over the wireless with an m2 card hooked in this is an m2 with usb 3.0 so we can't say that the issue would be the m2 card if this indeed does go slowly so i'm expecting about mm, how much would i say maybe, maybe let's say 300 megabits per second so yeah i definitely expect to be getting at least 30 megabytes transfer speed on here let's plug her in and see what happens Okay, I'm definitely seeing some improved speeds now. Maybe not as much as I could, but uh, definitely slightly better speeds. And this is for uh, writing. Let's see what the read speed will be. Oh yeah, transferring it back is definitely more like what I want to see. It's not as good as it could be, maybe not as good as it should be, but still, that's better. All right, guys, so I'll tell you what. I'm going to be getting a D-Link, a really nice D-Link, super powerful Wi-Fi 6 D-Link and testing it with this thing. I definitely still expect better transfer rates with what I was promised. So we'll try a new D-Link unit, and uh, we will see if it does any better. But for now, that's it for the review. I'm happy with this thing as far as the Wi-Fi goes, even when I hook it up to the older wireless. I don't seem to have the same problems that I normally do, and having the Bluetooth on here is definitely a big win. So, is it worth the money? Oh, I kind of wish I paid 20 bucks less, but let's see how it goes when I get the uh, D-Link. Anyways, if you want to check that out, if it's any better, I'm going to put a card at the end of this video. So if it's showing up right now, you might want to check that out, and perhaps I can show you the full potential. Perhaps. We shall see. Anyways, that's it for me, folks. Have a good one. Take care of each other.